Hey guys, today I wanted to bring you along with me on how I made this awesome Eagle City helipad sign for my parents' property up in Eagle City, Idaho. It used to be an old gold town, so we went with a rustic western vibe for this one. Here we go. So I'm wearing my RZ mask. It's the M2.5. I really like it for these longer projects if I'm wearing it in the garage for a long period of time. Look at that gorgeous cedar. We use western red cedar for this. I'm just marking out my spot. I'm only measuring the first board and then I'm going to cut the rest just to fit that same size. It didn't have to be super exact for this project, it just had to all match up. So I'm stacking them on top of each other to make sure that they are all the same size. Here I'm sanding all the boards down. I'm using 80 grit first and then I'm going back over it with 220 to make sure it's super smooth. Now we're going to use some heavy duty wood glue and then some clamps to tighten all the boards together making sure they're flat and then I'm using some furring strips on the back side as well just for extra support. I designed everything and printed it all out with the draw feature on my Cricut Maker for my template for my scroll saw and I'm just gluing them down to some contact paper on my template. Time to scroll! Whenever you're cutting letters out on your scroll saw, you want to make sure you cut the insides of your letters first. That way your piece is going to remain sturdy and it's going to be much less likely to break. Here's what real-time scrolling looks like, much, much slower than the time lapse. I get all my scroll saw blades from Bearwood Supply Company. Um, they have been so awesome. Ever since I switched to these blades, I literally haven't used anything else. I'm using number five for the cedar, um, and that's probably the most common one I use for most projects. You'll also see that little red chuck head. I switched out on my DeWalt 788 scroll saw um, for this Pegas one that I also got from Bear Woods. It reduces the vibration by quite a bit, and it's made a noticeable improvement. Good clean lines are all about good blades. Sanding arguably took longer than scrolling because I had to go over every single little crease. I'm using my Marathon Rotary tool that I also got from Bear Woods. Um, it's got a ton of attachments and I'm using this little sanding disc to soften all the edges first. And then I'm going back in with the small ball attachment and one of the sanding discs to rough up the letters so they look like they've been worn and they've got little dents and marks in them. Um, and it really got me the look I was going for. Whenever you're going for a rustic and distressed look and you want to intentionally age it, you just want to basically not think at all. <laughs> just go for it and start marking it up random ways. There's no right answer. You just don't want it to look too uniform, so just keep making marks until it looks right. Now we're going to be staining. I'm using Minwax Early American color for this. It was the perfect shade. It was just dark enough to give me that look I was going for to set it apart from the cedar backer, but um, not too dark to where you couldn't see all the pretty marks we just made. So it's a little bit darker in the cracks, which is the point, uh, highlights all those features, and I really, really like this color. I normally just use cut up old t-shirts when I'm staining. I don't care about just throwing away afterwards and I can cut off as big of a piece as I need. Um, I'm using that for the first part here and then since I have so many little grooves and everything, I got just a beat up old paintbrush that was nearing the end of its life. So I could get rid of that too once I was done, but that helped me get in all the cracks. There were over 70 individual pieces just in the border alone that I stained and sealed and cut and sanded just to give it that extra touch. I could have I could have painted or wood burned those on there and made it a lot less work for myself, but I really wanted to go all out for this sign. A lot of people ask me what to use to seal outdoor signs, and this is the only product that I've liked so far. It's Verathane Ultimate Spar Urethane. It's a water-based product. You're supposed to use at least three coats. I did a little bit more on this one because I knew it was going to be out in the elements for a long time. And you basically just put a, put a layer on, let it dry a few hours, put another layer on, 
until you're happy with the coverage. Now that we've sealed the backer, it's time to seal all of the individual pieces, all the grooves. So I'm using another small paintbrush here just to apply that to all the cracks and crevices. They look really, really awesome once they're all finally done. At this point, the letters are ready to be glued onto the sign once we space them out. Using my rotary tool again with a small ball bit for all the feather details and the eagle and the eye and the beak and just any of the details so it wasn't just a flat silhouette. Uh, worked really well and now I'm hand painting all of those individual feathers on the left wing. I just honestly googled pictures of eagles uh, and came to the consensus that they were mostly like brown body with the white tail feathers and the white head. I painted a dark charcoal color inside the grooves first and kind of wiped it off with my fingers so that it would settle into the cracks and actually show the depth. If I just painted it all brown, you wouldn't have been able to see all the marks we just made with our rotary tool. Even though I numbered my pieces, these feathers were really, really difficult to put together. It was such a hard puzzle. Um, I eventually got it done. Rust-Oleum Filler Primer is pretty much the only primer I use. I've gotten lots of tips from other makers. A lot of people use this stuff and it is awesome. It dries super quick. You just want to give it a quick sand in between before you do your layer of spray paint so that you have a smooth finish. I always buy my colors in a flat finish or a matte finish if I can. Uh, the most I'll do is like satin because I just I don't really like the look of gloss normally uh, unless it's requested for a customer and it's also a lot trickier to work with gloss. Time to frame it up. We're just using some cedar 1x3s now. Uh, I don't like to measure with a tape measure, I just basically line it up on the end and make a mark and then just double check it. I know you're supposed to like measure twice, cut once, but this method just works best for me when I'm doing my frames. Now I'm just giving it a quick sand with my orbital sander so the stain can be applied a little easier and it's not so rough to handle. Alright, time to glue up the sign. To help me out, I printed a giant template of my design and I laid it out on my piece and taped it all together. I used a little tiny pokey tool to mark indents uh, where the corners of each letter should be. Going back now, I wish I would have done it a little bit differently because it was still really hard to find those marks later, but there's lots of different ways you can do this to make sure that you get your spacing done right. Right now I'm just dry fitting everything, making sure all the spacing is where I want it. And then I'm going to go back here and use a combination of wood glue and super glue together to make sure that they are on there for good. My favorite wood glue that I use so far is uh, Tight Bond Ultimate. Uh, it's got the green label on it. It is awesome for this and I'm just using some Gorilla Super Glue also. It kind of creates like a clamping effect, especially if you put the super glue on the edge. Um, it'll kind of clamp your, your wood down and then the glue, once the glue dries, it's like set on there. Don't forget to add your branding. I have this awesome wood burner from Gearheart Industries I love. Here we have it. She's all glued up, ready to be mounted. Here's a few pictures just from the process. Thank you so much if you've made it this far. It means a lot for you to watch my video. It took a lot of time to make the sign and took a lot of time to make this video too. So if you'd like to see more videos or tutorials, please comment below and let me know what you'd like to see because I'd love to make more content for you guys. And if you're not already following me on Instagram or Facebook, I post a lot of behind the scenes tips and tricks on there, all the process behind all my signs. Uh, I normally post my stories first, so if you'd like to see that every day, go ahead and give me a follow on my social accounts. You can find me on all those platforms under the name The Toasty Flannel, and I also have a website, www.thetoastyflannel.com. Thank you again so much for watching, guys. Please subscribe if you want to see more awesome DIY woodworking videos. Bye!